Here goes. Hot cake. Oh my gosh, and this feels is amazing. <gasps> Inside of the avocado is a poached egg. My relationship with gluten is a complicated one. I was born with celiac disease. Fun fact, most of you probably didn't know that. But you're probably thinking, Alex, I have literally seen you stuffing 10 bread rolls from 7-Eleven in Japan into your mouth at the one time. How can you be a celiac? I ask myself the same question. You're probably confused. I'm going to tell you a story about gluten and me. <laughs> Sounds like it could be a rom-com. <laughs> If you would like to skip ahead past the introduction, I visit 10 gluten-free restaurants in Tokyo in today's video. I have some major successes, I have a couple of fails, but overall, I had the most incredible time. So if you'd like to skip ahead, this is the timestamp here for where the restaurants begin, but otherwise, grab a cup of tea and a gluten-free snack and sit back, relax, and listen to the story of my gluten allergies growing up a celiac. My grandfather was a celiac, my dad is a celiac, and when I was born, I was diagnosed with celiac disease as well. Now, I was born in 1993, and no one, I repeat, no one, knew what a celiac was. If I had a trace of wheat, and I mean a trace, like if someone cooked with a fry pan and they had wheat in that fry pan and they didn't wash it properly, and then someone cooked something for me in that fry pan and then I ate that, straight to hospital. I'd be in hospital for a week. I missed out on so much school growing up as a kid because people didn't know what wheat was, they didn't know what gluten was, they'd never heard of celiac disease. It was a traumatic time. So I was basically born a celiac or at least I was told that I was a celiac and I was also lactose intolerant. So my whole life growing up, I never had a slice of bread, never had a burger, never had pasta, until they developed gluten-free pasta, never had cereal, never had anything like that. It was impossible to find gluten-free food when I was growing up. When I say impossible, I mean impossible. It, it didn't exist. I mean, I, I lived on fruit, vegetables, plain, unseasoned meats. We had one type of gluten-free cheese bread <laughs> from this exotic greengrocer that we had to drive like an hour to get to. Then they introduced succotars. They were the first crackers I ever ate. Then they introduced... Nothing for a very long time. I think it wasn't until I was maybe 10 that gluten-free bread came around. I remember the first time I ate that, and I will never forget that. But anyway, I know a lot of you guys are saying this makes no sense because I've seen you eating gluten. This is a funny story. Don't try this at home, by the way. So I was in year nine at school by this point. The only time I'd ever had gluten in my life was times that I had accidentally had it and ended up in hospital. We had some exams coming up. Specifically, I had a Japanese test on that day, and I hadn't studied for it and I didn't want to do it. And quite frankly, I was an emotional, moody, 
really, really annoying teenager that would do absolutely anything to get out of school. My friends used to buy sausage rolls. If you're in America, you don't know what you're missing out on. At that time, I didn't know what I was missing out on either because I'd never eaten a sausage roll and I didn't know how good they tasted. I had a Japanese exam coming up. I thought, I'm not ready for it. I'll fail the class probably, if I fail that exam. How about I eat something that's going to make me sick and then I'll get raced off to hospital and then I'll have some more time to study for the exam and then I can resit it next week. Great. Someone give me a sausage roll. Now, I ate the sausage roll. The most incredible experience of my life, by the way. I took a bite out of it and all my friends were gathered around. They were like, we're waiting for something to happen. She's going to fall on the floor and start convulsing or something. And nothing happened. And I went, just, just wait for it. I will feel sick very shortly. Anyway, the, the bell rang. It was time for class. I had one lesson before the Japanese lesson, so I'm sitting in my English class. So I'm waiting for it to hit me. Any minute! You wait for it, guys! And all my friends are looking across at me. They're like, Alex is gonna be sick any minute now. Nothing happened. I was not sick. I did not end up in hospital. I did not pass go. I did not collect $200. I was completely fine. What? just happened to me. Are you telling me for the, for the first time in my life, I just ate something with gluten in it and I didn't get sick. And that was when I discovered that through some miracle, I don't know, I was no longer allergic to gluten. Now this made no sense, right? Because if you're a celiac, you can't get over being a celiac. As far as I've read on the internet, you, you don't recover from celiac disease. It's, it's a lifelong thing. If you have the allergy, you don't just get rid of it. People do develop it later on in life, but they don't just lose it. So very strange. So then the question is, was I never a celiac to begin with? Or was I just gluten intolerant? There was a good couple of years when I didn't have any hospital visits because I was on top of it. And then I had the incident with a sausage roll where I was like, I know years and years and years ago, this would put me in hospital, nothing happened. So that was really strange. And I went home that day and I said to my mom, Mom, guess what? I ate a sausage roll. And she went, oh no, here we go. Get the ambulance. I said, Mom, I ate the sausage roll. Nothing happened. She said, well, that's not possible. I said, but I ate a sausage roll. Nothing happened. So she said, we'll never do it again. You're, it's a miracle. You know, you're blessed. God has protected you today. Obviously, God wanted me to sit that Japanese exam. Then I became a little bit more brave. Now, my mom did say to me, never. Never eat gluten again, you are very lucky that nothing happened, but don't you go eating it again. So what did I do the next day at school? <laughs> F me up fam, give me another sausage roll please. So I haven't had a physical reaction to gluten in a very, very long time. But that being said, my mum always keeps saying to me, Alex, you can't just be cured of celiac disease. So I had to go have some tests done. And recently I actually had a colonoscopy and endoscopy because we were at this point where we were like, what's going on allergen wise? Am I not a celiac anymore? Am I lactose intolerant anymore? I mean, I eat cheese and I'm fine. I eat gluten and I'm fine. Do I have any allergies now? In order to test for celiac disease and know conclusively, you have to have a bowel biopsy. So I actually had that done last year. They told me, you are not a celiac. It's a mystery. I think my last gluten related hospital visit was probably when I was like 10 or 11. Uh, I went to a Chinese restaurant. My mum said to them, can you make something that doesn't have gluten in it? And the waiter was like, and she said, y you know, gluten, like wheat. Yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine. It was not fine. I ended up in hospital for a week after that. That was my last gluten induced hospital visit because after that we were so cautious because that was a really, really bad incident. I had such a strict diet. Everything was 100% gluten free. There were no contaminants, nothing. So I went all these years. So I don't know at what point that the allergy or the intolerance or whatever it was disappeared. I don't know what age I would have been, but I just know that somewhere in between the age of like 10 and 14, something changed and I've been able to eat gluten since then. Now, when I eat it, I still get bloated. So I usually keep my gluten intake low anyway, really, growing up as a celiac or whatever I was, it's no issue for me to be gluten free. Uh, and obviously in Australia, at least, every man and their dog is gluten free at the moment. It's, it's, it's trendy, you know, a lot of people just go gluten free just because it's a, it's a trendy diet. You can go basically anywhere in this country and get gluten free food. You can get gluten free Japanese food, gluten free Thai food, gluten free Indian, gluten free whatever you want. They have it in every place. But you know where they don't have gluten free food? They don't have it in Japan. The first trip that I went on to Japan, I was still under the impression I was a celiac and I had the hardest time. It was basically impossible. I took a bottle of gluten-free soy sauce with me, but I knew that even if I 
ate things that I thought were gluten-free, they may not be. Plain rice, you might think that you're safe, but sometimes the plain rice, they make it with mirin. And mirin has barley malt mixed with rice vinegar, and that can be a problem for celiacs too. So the first time I went to Japan, I just lived on fresh fruit. I lived on sashimi, like raw fish, tofu, and really not very much else at all, like hardly anything. Second time I went to Japan was quite a number of years later after the sausage roll, after that incident, and I was like, woohoo, I can eat whatever I want and not get sick. I do still obviously remember how difficult that it was. Now with the Tokyo Olympics coming up, there's going to be so many new people going to Japan that have never been before, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people with dietary requirements. You can get a gluten-free translation card. I printed off one of these on my first trip, took it everywhere with me, handed it to people in restaurants, most of the time they looked at it, and even though it was in their own language, they looked at it as though it was in English, and they didn't understand it, but it was in Japanese, but they had no idea. Because a lot of people, at least back then in Japan, they'd never heard of a gluten allergy, ever. So even if you gave them the translation card with the gluten-free instructions on it, even then they still had no idea. Now it's definitely better. I recommend that you learn the kanji for wheat. This is the kanji, here. You can kind of recognize it by the, the little symbol that kind of looks almost like a fish with little fins. It's definitely going to help you when you're in supermarkets and you can look on the packaging. Also download Google Translate. Google Translate, I've showed it in so many of my Japan videos, the most helpful. It's got like a live camera translation where you can just hold it up in front of something and it'll translate the ingredients in front of you. My last tip is to keep an eye out for these restaurants that I list off in today's video. So these restaurants are either exclusively gluten-free or they have gluten-free items available. It was actually a really good way for me to see more of Tokyo than I've ever seen before because I was going out of my way to find these places and I was going to areas that I've never been before. Bear in mind that there are definitely more gluten-free restaurants than what I show in today's video. I put this list together based on what I thought looked good from blog posts that I read and also location, places that were close to stations and things like that, but there's definitely more than I'll show in today's video. Now while I was in Japan I met up with my dad and my dad is a celiac and neither of us could believe just how far the whole gluten-free thing has come in the last couple of years. I actually would go as far as to say that some of the gluten-free food in Japan was better than gluten-free food I've had here in Australia. So with that, sorry for the long intro. I hope you enjoy watching me eating at 10 different gluten-free cafes in Tokyo. Give us a thumbs up if you like the idea of this video. I know you haven't even seen the restaurants yet, but give us a thumbs up anyway and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, let's get on with the video. This menu is Japanese on one side, but then when you flip it, it's all in English. It says, Zenny's pizzas. A zen is a term of a unit we use only for bowls of rice and pairs of chopsticks. The dough of Zenny's pizza is made of 70 grams of rice flour, which is almost equivalent to a regular bowl of steamed rice, and it's served with a small organic salad. You've got a tomato and sausage pizza, so that's 11 US dollars or about 15 Australian dollars. Basil and smoked oil sardines, and miso and shirasu. These all sound really, really delicious, and I've been told they're amazing pizzas. And look, it even says here, yes, all gluten-free, which is very rare to find in Japan. Down here, you've got gluten-free lager beer as well, which I'm definitely going to try. So it does look like the only food on the menu is the pizza and the soup, which is fine by me because I'm here for pizza. So let's order. It tastes just like a normal beer. It really doesn't taste any different. It actually tastes a little bit florally, I would say. 330 mils, 5% alcohol. It's a very easy beer to drink, a little bit florally. It's definitely a lager. I, I wasn't sure what gluten-free lager would be like, whether it would taste significantly different or not. It doesn't, just tastes like a normal beer to me. 
It says, the world's most award-winning gluten-free beer. It could be the only gluten-free beer in the world, and I wouldn't know, but it is very, very good. It is damn good, in fact. <laughs> okay, so the two pizzas that we ended up ordering, we've got the tomato and sausage, so this one is rice flour dough, homemade tomato sauce, additive-free sausage, cellulose-free cheese, fresh Okinawan basil, and this one here is rice flour dough, miso and mayonnaise sauce, organic Japanese chives, shirasu, which is tiny fish, cellulose-free cheese, and nori. We'll try the sausage first. Wow. I've had gluten-free pizza many, many times before in my life. This doesn't taste like a classic gluten-free base. This tastes like a normal base, I would say. That homemade tomato sauce, it's absolutely delicious. It's not too salty. It's got a lot of flavor in there. I can taste a lot of herbs in there as well. They're little teeny tiny pieces of sausage, so it's not like when you order a meat lovers or a pepperoni or something and it's full of meat. Mmm. I can't get over the base. It's so nice. It's fluffy, it's light, it's crunchy, and it holds its shape. It hasn't gone soggy. It's so good. Let's try this miso one now. I can see the tiny fish. Wow, so unusual. Very strong Japanese flavors with the fish and the miso and the nori. Really super Japanese, but also nice and crispy and still tastes like a pizza because of the cheese. I'll tell you what guys, it was an eight minute walk from a Motesando station, but I highly recommend it. If you're looking for some good gluten-free food around the Harajuku area, you have to head here. This place is so nice. Highly, highly recommend. I have a question for you guys. Do you eat pizza with your fingers or with a knife and fork? I want to introduce you to Yusuke-san, who is the owner of this restaurant. Hello, you too. Do you want to maybe tell us what uh, inspired you to open your restaurant? Well, uh... It's a long story, but make it short. We were doing this uh, rice-related business for a long time because uh, my boss, uh, she's actually my mother, oh. she's, she's been a professional baker and uh, she actually uh, makes some bread with rice oh. and we've, we've been doing this rice baking mm. business for a long time and oh, we've been wow. helping farmers as well. Oh. And then later on this gluten-free culture of say boom is invited yeah. to Japan mm. and we have this uh, head start. Mm. Kind of thing. So do you find many people in Japan are asking for gluten-free food now? Um, yeah, so visitors, yes. Visitors, yes. yes. Somehow we Japanese have stronger insight system, mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm. But uh, yeah, for a uh, health reason, yeah. say a lot of athletes are not athletes. turning yeah, ah, yes. to the uh, gluten-free lifestyle. Mm. And when did you open this cafe? It's been a year. A year? Like last week. We've been just uh, when you Oh, one Thank year. You. Oh, congratulations. Arato. Well, that was delicious. Got you some summer dish. Well, thank you for coming. And the, uh, it was great to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure you guys come visit Yusuke when you're in Tokyo. Definitely worth the visit. Sayonara. <laughs> bye bye. Look guys, I'm really sorry. I know I told you I would find you a gluten-free ramen shop, but unfortunately this one is only gluten-free. It's it's not gluten-free, it's gluten-free. Okay guys, we are at our gluten-free, vegan and halal ramen shop now. So this one is actually an order at a vending machine style store, which is very popular in Japan. It can be a bit intimidating, but I'll show you here. There's an English option on the menu here. So you just say English, you've got noodles, Dipping noodles, vegetarian and vegan, and gluten-free. So let's go to the gluten-free menu. So we've got gluten-free brown rice noodle, spicy miso, salty noodle, soy sauce, gluten-free fried chicken, which apparently the karage is incredible, and you have to try it. I'm gonna go for a spicy one. Let's go spicy miso noodle, and you've got gluten-free fried chicken. Let's print ticket. Please insert 1,680 yen. So it's about $20. Please Look at this. Hold your smart card over the smart card reader. This is like an Opal card in Australia. Please wait. 
you the use this is now to get on trains and you can also pay at some restaurants with you know so uh, I just use my train ticket basically to pay for my lunch Please so take your ticket take your ticket so you take this and you take it inside you take a seat give that to the chef and uh, happy days so let's give it a try I actually think it tastes better than normal karage. The batter is spiced, kind of salty, super, super crunchy. Mm, the chicken's really tender. Oh my god, it's so good. So in Japan, you slurp your noodles and it's kind of like a sign that you're enjoying it. It feels very unnatural for me, but I'll give it a try. Oh my god, it's so hot. I think I'm slurping wrong. The spiciness is so good. It's the perfect level of spice. And the noodles, they're brown rice noodles, but they taste like standard noodles. They don't taste like they're gluten-free or, you know, it's not like vermicelli or something. Mm. And there's some meat here. There's chicken. No pork in this restaurant, so it's a halal restaurant. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. I can't believe I have found delicious gluten-free ramen that tastes like normal ramen. If you were served this and you didn't know it was gluten-free, you wouldn't think it was gluten-free. It's just normal noodles. It's absolutely delicious. I highly recommend the spicy one if you can handle spice. If you can't handle spice, go for the miso or the salt. Look at my glasses fogging up. There's a lot of reviews about this place on Google saying that it is the best gluten-free ramen you'll get in Japan. And I can see why. If I was staying in Kamakura, if I was like an hour away, I would come here just for this ramen. Okay guys, it's dinner time now and we've just trekked all this way to a cafe that's called Little Bird. Now, according to Google, this cafe is in Shibuya, but as I just learned after walking for 25 minutes, it is in the district of Shibuya, but it's actually closer to Yoyogi. So it took quite some time to get here, but I reckon that it's going to be worth the walk because when you Google gluten-free places to eat in Tokyo, this one comes up on every single list. It's supposed to be really, really popular. It is a little bit unsuspecting because it's in this building behind me here and it's on the third floor. Now from the front, you would have no idea it's there, but right at the very top up there, there's a window. See where my finger is? Right about there. That, that window there says Little Bird and it says GF, gluten-free. This cafe's entire menu is gluten-free. You can order anything here and it's gluten-free. Not like the place where we had lunch that had a gluten-free specific menu. The entire menu of this cafe is gluten-free. They don't open until midday though and they close at 8 p.m. I've been told that the gyoza at this restaurant is a must try and apparently even compared to gyoza made with gluten, apparently it's even better. There's a lot of reviews online saying that the decor leaves a lot to be desired. But look, we're here for the food, we're not here for the decor. Apparently it's a bit cramped and claustrophobic inside, so aside from that, food is meant to be amazing. So let's hope they're open. They're supposed to be open until 8 p.m., so we should be here with enough time. So let's head up. Here is all gluten-free, all rice flour. Please be sure to let me know about dairy-free, vegan, anything food allergies. Definitely trying some gyoza. Fried gyoza, 
karage waffle, okonomiyaki, yakisoba. We've got burgers. If I hadn't already eaten pizza today, I would definitely get that because corn and mayonnaise is the best combination in the world. There's a whole bunch of messages on the wall. Konnichiwa, good day. Before I found your restaurant, as someone who is gluten-free and vegan, I was eating only rice, salted nuts, and bananas from the convenience store in Tokyo. Thank you for offering alternatives, love and Aussie. Hi, we ate wonderful food at your cafe five evenings. Dear little bird, thank you so much for the gluten-free dinner. I looked for restaurants for my dad who cannot eat gluten prior to traveling from the USA. This was the first and best spot I found. You have made my dad very happy with the delicious and wonderful food. Arigato gozaimasu. Oishi, little bird. Gosh, there's so many letters here. Thank you for offering very delicious gluten-free products. Bonjour, merci, something, le, rapport, re, le gluten, c'est très appet, arigato. <laughs> Got this one. Thank you, little bird. I am from Melbourne and have been struggling to eat for a week and you guys have honestly made my trip. I got to try my first ever ramen and it was delicious. Thank you so much, love, Ali. Oh, this is my favorite one. Thank you for existing. <laughs> Everybody's ugly after 2 a.m. Sydney, Australia. Okay, so our gyoza has arrived. It's 600 yen for a plate of gyoza, which is a very normal price for gyoza. I'm very excited because apparently this gluten-free gyoza is even better than normal gyoza. We've got a pan-fried one and a deep-fried one. I normally prefer pan-fried because it's half steamed, half fried. It's nice and soft with a little bit of crunch. Okay, so moment of truth. How does this stand up to standard gluten gyoza? Just as good. Oh, it's so nice. That's so good. It's delicious. The dumpling wrap just tastes like a normal wrapper. I, I don't know how they make that without gluten involved because normally gluten is what makes it sort of bind together. It's made of rice flour. It's really, really tasty. Okay, time to try the fried one. And the fried one has been served with tomato sauce, which, I mean, I'll give it a try, but I would probably still have it with soy personally. So the soy sauce would also be gluten free because everything here is gluten free. So nice. Maybe if I put it with soy sauce and the ketchup, it'll taste less Western. Mm. There are no words. Oh, so good. So nice. If you've been wanting to try gyoza in Japan, and you haven't been able to find a gluten-free, well, you know you can get it here, and it's absolutely delicious. Guys, look at the size of this burger. This is the veggie burger. Look how huge it is. I have never seen such a big burger in my life, and this is gluten-free too. I think I'm going to get okonomiyaki. That's really calling to me, because I've never seen gluten-free okonomiyaki before. It's only a thousand yen as well. So I think I'm gonna order that once I get through some of this gyoza. But in the meantime, I wanted to tell you guys about the reviews of this place on Google. So this has a 4.7 rating. This person says, if you're gluten-free, you have to come here. You owe it to yourself after all the plain rice, plain fish, plain tofu meals you've had in Japan. You need to come here. Plan your day around it. If you haven't booked your accommodation yet, stay close to here so you can come here a few times. This says, come hungry, though you probably already are if you're gluten-free and traveling Japan. <laughs> This one says, what you read on here is all true. The food is delicious and gluten-free and beautifully prepared. The room is small and purposefully scruffy and intimidating to people with no imagination. The reviews, they just go on and on and on. This seems to be the most popular gluten-free place that we've come across so far. And I definitely see why. They have a huge selection and everything's gluten-free. You know you can order anything on the menu and it's going to be gluten-free. So that's a massive bonus. You don't have to worry about maybe accidentally ordering off the wrong menu. And also you don't have to worry about contaminants because everything here is gluten free so they're not going to cook on a pan that's had gluten on it in the past or something like that. This is the bread that the burger's on. Mm. Oh, it's really nice. This tastes like the stuff profiteroles rolls are made out of. I can imagine dipping this in chocolate and stuffing it with cream. Oh my gosh, and this gills is amazing. Mm. Okay. 500 yen for a giant beer too. About five dollars. 
This is gluten-free beer. It's a very, very tasty. I'm that friend that everyone hates because they say, you know, maybe you should order your own chips. And I go, no, I don't want any. And then I just spend the whole time stealing the other person's chips. <laughs> The Okonomiyaki has arrived and it's a really big serving and this was only a thousand yen. And this is totally gluten free. And look at the little bonito flakes, look at them moving. So there's mayonnaise, tonkotsu sauce, which I'm very surprised to see is gluten free. Bonito flakes, you've even got little Japanese pickles. Oh, okay, I can see corn and cabbage in there. If you're a celiac and you've never had Okonomiyaki before, this is what it tastes like. This is exactly what it tastes like. I think this is my favourite thing I've eaten so far. I'm a sucker for mayonnaise. My hair keeps getting in my food. That was such a delicious meal. Now something I just need to point out, when we went to pay the bill, I uh, went to pay with card and it is cash only. Good thing my dad had some cash on him because uh, if he didn't, it would have been a last minute dash to a convenience store, which wouldn't have been very convenient. Now we walked all the way here from Shibuya, but there is actually a train station at Yoyogi. We're just going to head there now. It's only a four minute walk from that station. The bill came to 5,200 yen in total, which that's 52 US dollars, probably 65 Australian dollars for two people for a gluten-free meal. And I had three alcoholic beverages and my dad had an orange juice. So that's actually very, very reasonable, especially considering how hard it is to find gluten-free food in Japan. So we'll try three new places tomorrow. I'm very, very excited. And uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, so it's day two of the gluten-free diet and we are currently walking from our hotel in Akasaka all the way to Rapongi. Now that's about a 35 minute walk. So our breakfast restaurant that we're heading to is called Captain Cook. Now Captain Cook is well known because they bake their own bread in house. So if you're feeling like a gluten-free eggs benedict for breakfast, well, you're in luck. I've also heard that the gluten-free French toast is meant to be very, very good. It's supposed to be a British style restaurant and it's meant to have cozy decor and attentive service so I'm really looking forward to it. It's just a fair bit of a walk and I'm already tired. It's apparently here somewhere. The GPS is telling me it's here, maybe around the corner. Oh, would you look at that? There it is. Oh, how cute. Look, it's got all the little men out there for the, what do you call these guys? Uh, Buckingham Palace, the, the, the men that guard Buckingham Palace, the beef eaters. That's Grenadier what you call them. The, the, sorry, what? Grenadier guards. Grenadier guards. I like beef eaters better. Avocado and kale salad, English breakfast, pancake, fish and chips, Shakespeare's Globe, roast beef, salmon benedict and bread and breakfast. Now the thing is, I'm not sure if everything here is gluten free. I don't know if it's 100% gluten free, so let's head in and find out. So all the meals that are gluten-free are marked with it and it looks like everything on the breakfast menu is gluten-free. 
We've got pan baked hot cake, vegan bircher muesli, vegan French toast, waffles. We've got vegan English breakfast, eggs Benedict, vegan avocado toast, Shakespeare's Globe, and a healthy breakfast. All of those things are gluten free by the looks of it. So just keep an eye out for that little symbol there. So it's not 100% gluten free, but most of the things are. everyone the food has arrived so we've got three different things here this is the Shakespeare's globe which looks really really cool this is an avocado that's wrapped in bacon and on the inside of the avocado is a poached egg this is the muesli this is a vegan muesli it's got coconut cream on the top here it's got little flowers and raspberry all different sorts of fruit and I think that the oats are soaked in almond milk and then this, this is the hot cakes. Now this, they make this uh, all gluten free, all their bread and everything, they make it here in store. This is served with some sort of little cream, probably a coconut cream of some sort. That's also got some sort of ice cream on it too. And I also got a side of gluten free bread because they make their own bread, so I was desperate to try it. I'm very, very excited. But I think the most important thing to do at the moment is to cut into the Shakespeare's Globe and watch the egg ooze. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yum. Look, okay, I know some people might think it just looks like a mess, but that is a perfectly, perfectly poached egg. I'm so excited to eat this. It's so good. Oh my God. That's the best combination. And the feta cheese on top too. So the bacon is cooked really nicely. It's tender and soft, but also it's a little bit crunchy too. The avocado, beautiful, perfectly ripe, nice and soft. It's not brown anywhere at all. It's always so heartbreaking when you order a poached egg and you cut into it and the yolk is solid. Beautiful yolk, okay. Uh, I'm not yolking. Okay, we've got some tomato with some feta and basil as well. Oh my God, that is so good. Oh, it's so tasty, wow. I'm so happy. And then there's obviously two other dishes as well. Here's our muesli, which looks really, really pretty. And this, I think that this is going to be absolutely delicious. Oh, boy, she's so. Okay, here we go. Give that a try. Oh, his face just lit up. Is it tasty? Very nice. Very nice. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's so nice. The muesli has little bits of cranberry mixed in with it. So it's this kind of tart flavor with the sweetness of the almond milk and the oats or whatever they are. They can't be oats because oats aren't gluten free. I don't know what that is, but it is gluten free. Whatever the grain is, it's very, very soft and tender. Oh, it's so tasty. And all the fruit, that's really, really fresh fruit too. That was so nice. So the next thing to try is the hot cake. Okay. Hot cake. Hot cake. Okay, and get some of the ice cream. Here goes, hot cake. I feel emotional. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Just try it. Just try it. Oh, his eyes just shut. Oh, he's 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 drooping over in his chair. He's bobbing up and down. <laughs> Tell me, what are you, what are you experiencing right now? He's just going. He's doing exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it good? Mm. It's so sweet mm. and juicy and oh my gosh, that's better than a normal pancake. Oh, much better. Much better. Guys, you gotta, I would like come halfway across Tokyo just for that pancake. Japan, <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this gluten free bread. Let me try it. That tastes like normal gluten free bread that I'd buy back home. But that pancake tastes much better than any pancake I've ever had. Mm. It's the best thing I've eaten since I've been here. Hmm? Isn't it good? Mm.
<laughs> I don't understand how it's so good. No. <laughs> I don't think that they've taken gluten free to a, another, level. another level here, like mm -hmm. compared to what we get back home. Yep. Don't you? Mm -hmm. I just can't believe this pancake. If I come back here, I think we should come back here. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Mm-hmm. Do they have any spoons in there? Yeah, they do. You can scoop it up with a spoon. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's still going, guys. Every last morsel. Mm. I think the toast may not be made here. I think it's the bread that they use for the buns, for the burgers. I think all of that would be made in store, but just that piece of gluten-free toast I had, it was cut, it was so perfectly shaped. It looked like a pre-made, you know, like something you'd buy. I don't think, but I also don't know how to ask. I mean, I know mise means store. I guess I could say like, kono pan, this bread, wa kono mise o tsukurimasu ka. No, tsukuru is to use. Oh, my Japanese isn't good enough. No, to make. What's to make? It is tsukuru. Um, it is. I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Hmm, hang on, let me let me type this into Google Translate. What I think. If I said, kono pan wa kono mise o tsukurimasu ka. Does this bread make this store? <laughs> Glad I didn't ask that. <laughs> I've been told by Dad that I need to check out upstairs because apparently it's all decorated nicely. <gasps> wow! Wow! <laughs> it's so cute. What the heck? Isn't this beautiful? Oh my goodness! I can't get over how funny that was. Does this bread make the shop? <laughs> no, but the pancake does. <laughs> okay guys, we're all finished with breakfast and that was absolutely incredible. That pancake, I will never stop raving about how nice that was. If you come here and you buy that pancake, please make sure that you take a photo of it and tag me on Instagram and uh, rave about how good it is. But anyway, that's it for breakfast and uh, now we're moving on to lunch. Star Trucks. <laughs> okay guys, we're heading off to lunch now and we're walking through the beautiful streets of Rapongi. So the place we're heading to now is called Falafel Brothers. Apparently this is a very small place, it's only got about four seats, but you know, the small places are sometimes the best. So uh, it should just be at the top of this road. This is basically the way to Rapongi Station, so it's not too far from here. Well, there it is guys, I can see it just up on the horizon up there. That's it up there, cool. Look at this place, the Empire Steakhouse. It would have been funnier if it was the Empire Steak Building. Unfortunately, they, they lost a couple of points there. Based on the really big sign, I did kind of think it would be a bigger place, but there really is only four seats. I can see someone sitting at the counter there, and I think that there's only going to be a couple more seats, so I don't know how much of a atmospheric video I'm going to be able to get to show you what it's like on the inside. But the most important thing is the food, so let's test it out. Oh my god, I haven't had falafels that taste that good since I was in Israel. So good. They're so good. 
not everything is gluten free. He did say to me that the chips were gluten free, but I'm really, really suspicious of those chips. They were wedges. He said to me all it is, it's potato and paprika. He said that's all it is. But when I was biting into it, it had that same sort of crunch that you would get when you've got like a flour coating. I was like, gluten free? Definitely gluten free? Are you sure it's gluten free? And he said, the pita bread obviously isn't gluten free, but he said everything else is. But then when I was reading the menu, there were some things that I thought, that doesn't sound gluten free to me. I don't know if I want to recommend this one to any celiacs. I would highly recommend it to vegans though. Uh, vegan and vegetarians, you're not going to have any issue. All up, that was 2,900 yen for what we just ate. And that's about 30 US dollars, 35 or 38 Australian dollars. And when you think about it, for six falafels and some leafy salad and then a bowl of hummus that's a huge amount of money I think that's probably the worst value for money out of all of them but if you're really craving some falafels then you know that you can get it here in Roppongi so uh, that's it for lunch and then dinner I'm really really excited about dinner the place we're going for dinner is so cool so uh, stay posted <laughs> I lied to you I said see you at dinner but I forgot to tell you I did pick up a gluten-free cookie there was a gluten-free cookie on the counter it was a coconut cookie here it is here I'm not sure if it's homemade or not smells smells very coconutty oh my god ah, I can't find it oh ah. listen How am I gonna eat this? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. I can't eat it. It's rock solid, it's hard as a rock. I feel like it would have been good at some stage, but either it's gone stale or they just cooked it too much. But it tastes like tastes like coconut and white chocolate. But um yeah, no. Okay guys, it's not quite dinner time yet, but we are already hungry. So we're here at Gluten Free Tea's Kitchen, which is also called 6-1 Cafe, I think it's called. Now this place is supposed to be really, really popular. It's meant to be very, very good. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Everything on the menu is gluten free. So uh, let's head inside. Gluten Free Tea's Kitchen, second floor, up the stairs. So you can't get to it through the elevator apparently. Let's enjoy gluten free life. Gluten free, vegan, nut free, dairy free, egg free, soy free. Wow, that's a massive menu. We support people who have gluten allergies and other dietary restrictions. Since this issue in Japan is still not well known, we're working hard on spreading gluten-free cuisine throughout Japan. If you want to support us, please write a review on TripAdvisor. Marinade of mushrooms with truffle oil, french fries, vegetable spring rolls, pork gyoza, vegan gyoza, shrimp and vegetable tempura, vegetable tempura, Cajun fried chicken, Asian salad, chicken ramen, miso butter corn ramen, sandwich, spicy teriyaki sandwich, vegan bread, uh, yakiniku rice plate, Sukiyaki, mmm, yum. Vegan curry, curry with salad, macaroni and vegan cheese, pork bolognese, pork yakisoba, seafood yakisoba, okonomiyaki, and vegetables, soy meat, taco rice. Wow, this is very exciting. Oh, even on the back we've got dessert, chocolate brownie, pancake, cherry blossom cake, and today's ice cream plate and seasonal desserts, certified gluten-free. Kombucha cherry, caffeine-free. I like the sound of that. I think I'm gonna get that. No. Cherry kombucha. <laughs> I don't speak language. Wow, that's so nice. I love it. So we were just brought this. This is a survey. It says, we are serious about supporting gluten-free people. Please take a few minutes to fill out this survey. We don't have any accurate data about celiac disease or wheat allergy in Japan. Japanese curry. Okay. I didn't think it would. Normally Japanese curry is quite brown. I didn't think it would taste the same, but it just tastes exactly like normal Japanese curry. Here's my cake. This is like a cherry blossom cake. I think we've got matcha ice cream. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. It's so nice. It's so delicious. I can't believe that's gluten free. I have no idea how they make this. This is so tasty. Very impressed. Like shaken to my core. Impressed. I would come back here for this cake.
homemade gluten-free soft cookies. There's something that our falafel brothers could learn a thing or two about soft cookies. Okay, so here is my yakiniku beef. This looks really, really tasty. Good serving of meat, nice looking salad, big pile of rice and chips. So we've doubled down on the carbs, but uh, it's all gluten-free. These look like Macca's chips. Mm. Oh, yum. Oh, they're really good. <laughs> okay, here goes. I absolutely adore yakiniku. It is just one of my favorite things ever. Yakiniku or teriyaki beef, they'll call it in some places. So this has obviously been made with a gluten-free soy sauce. Mm. Oh. oh, it's so good. Oh, I gotta try the spring rolls. Oh wow, they're really interesting. They're jam-packed full of mushrooms and pepper, and they're super salty. The pastry tastes like normal phyllo pastry. Could do with a little bit of this chili sauce that they've given me. Listen to the crunch. I don't understand how they make that. I don't know how that could be gluten-free. It's so good. I really think this is my favorite thing I've had. Really? Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Oh, you underestimate how much I love beef. I really don't think they need to serve this with chips. <laughs> like if you're serving rice, you mm. really don't need to serve yeah, chips. Unusual, I feel like that it's just, you know, please, oh, please, please the foreigners throw some chips on there. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. French fries. Okay guys, so we just finished uh, eating dinner and I have to say that was a little bit expensive. It was 7,430 yen which is 75 US dollars, which is probably about potentially even 90 Australian dollars. That was a lot. So look, I think if you wanna have a nice night out, for example, I think you'd really like that if you're willing to spend a little bit more, but you couldn't eat there every day. The place we went for dinner last night, you could eat every single day. I don't think you could eat here every day. That was very expensive. <laughs> Well guys, we're at the top of the Mori Tower in Rapongi, and I'm finally going to give this rock solid cookie a try from Falafel Brothers because I've got a coffee here, so if I dip this, maybe it might be edible now. Oh! It's just so slightly. Good morning guys, I'm coming to you from a new part of Tokyo that I have never been to before. So this is day three. We are one stop outside of Shibuya. This place is called Daikan Yama. Daikan Yama, I'm pretty sure it was called. Now there's a cafe here called Blue Jam Cafe that is supposed to be very, very good. So this cafe is apparently supposed to be a West Coast style breakfast and brunch spot. Now, as a humble Australian myself, I don't really know what West Coast means. Father? Well, West Coast is where uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Oh, okay, Los Angeles. That's where the YouTubers are. So this must be very trendy. <laughs> Forgive me for not knowing anything at all about American geography. Now, this menu is not 100% gluten-free, so you do have to check the items before you order them, but I'm assuming everything will have a little logo marked next to it that says gluten-free. And I read online that you must try the almond milk hot chocolate with ginger. I've also read that the fish tacos are a must try. Now it might be a little bit early in the morning for fish tacos, it is 8 a.m. But you know, we're trying to hit up a couple of these cafes today, so that's why we're getting an early start. So I'll have a look at the menu when we get there. Apparently it's only 130 meters from the station. So this building behind me is the Daikanyama station. Now if I put it into Google Maps, it wants me to go that way. Here we go, look. Open for breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Oh, look at that, Dad. You were right. From LA. Vegan friendly, gluten free friendly, and most importantly, free Wi Fi. So it looks like it's on the basement second floor. Now, that makes me sad because if it's in the basement, are there going to be any windows? Is this going to be a windowless cafe? That's a little bit depressing at breakfast time. You need sunlight to help you wake up.
Ah, okay, I see. Gluten-free, 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 gluten-free. GFP, what's that? Gluten-free possible, okay. Another one, another one, this one, this one, that one, that one, that one. Basically everything, almost everything. This is a massive, massive menu. Oh my gosh, it just keeps going. There's a Mexican section, sandwiches, burgers, dessert. Gee, that's the biggest menu I've seen so far. It's huge. I need to start taking notes. Okay guys, so I uh, finished up breakfast. I wanted the ar ar Aragula, ar Aragula, it's Rocket in Australia. I wanted the Rocket Cobb salad, but it was 2,300 yen, which is about 28 Australian dollars for a salad. And I was thinking, no way am I dropping almost 30 bucks on my first meal of the day. So instead I opted for the fish tacos because when I saw all the reviews online, lots of people were raving about the gluten-free fish tacos. And I have to say that was the worst decision I've made on this trip so far. I hated them so much. The uh, tortilla was awful. I mean, I've had gluten-free tortillas before and they're nowhere near that bad. It was just like, kind of like sandpaper, but really, really crumbly. As I picked up the fish taco, the whole thing fell apart. I was trying to eat it and there's stuff going everywhere. It just kept breaking and tearing and it tasted horrible. Also the fish on the inside, it was fried. I don't know what the batter was, maybe rice flour or something, but the fish had no flavor. It just tasted like nothing at all. So I drowned it in hot sauce, absolutely drowned it. All it tasted like was hot sauce after that, which is fine by me because I love hot sauce. But uh, yeah, I would not recommend the fish tacos. Now my dad had an egg dish and the eggs looked like they were cooked really, really nicely. But when I tasted it, I personally thought the eggs were quite bland. The best part of dad's dish I thought were the potatoes, but funnily enough, he didn't like the potatoes. I have never seen potatoes cooked like that. I think it was called hash or something, I'm not sure. It was really unusual because they were chopped up really small and they were kind of crunchy. They were tasty, they were quite oily though. We also got hot chocolates. We got those uh, almond milk ginger hot chocolates. Now they were 750 yen on their own, and then when you get almond milk, it adds an extra 100 yen. The total bill came to about 5,500 yen, 60 something Australian dollars. That's a lot for breakfast. We, all we ordered, one dish each and one drink each, and that's $30 a head, which is making me want to reconsider my life choices. So this next place that we're going is called Revive Kitchen. And this was actually recommended to me by yusuke Sun, who was the owner of the very first restaurant that we visited on day one. So we're gonna have a little bit of a walk around the streets here, walk off the breakfast, and then we will head to Revive Kitchen for lunch. Alright guys, so we found Revive Kitchen, it's here behind me. It's a really beautiful looking place, very classy. Now I have heard if you want to come here for dinner, you definitely need a reservation. Apparently they won't let you just walk in, you need a reservation. I don't know if you need one for breakfast or lunch though, so let's head in and find out. We've got gluten free vegan, kale, broccoli, green lemon. That sounds really, really tasty. Cauliflower chickpeas tarragon gluten free, green peas couscous and sesame, velvety smooth green pea mousse and couscous, ooh, sorba Chinese yam and mustard greens, pressed barley, hang on, I'm confused, barley isn't gluten free. We've also got pineapple, almond milk and rum, caramel toasted pineapple, this is not gluten free, it's the only thing that doesn't say it, coconut ginger orange.
Oh, wow. Hmm. Very interesting. Got a really unusual texture. It's like puffed rice. There's a lot of flavor going on. Feels like it's very good for you. Well guys, where to begin? I took some notes again. Basically everything on the menu is marked as gluten-free, but, but, I'm a little bit concerned because I did notice things that I did not think were gluten-free. There was barley and there was couscous. So I'm not entirely sure if they've somehow managed to figure out a way here in Japan to remove gluten from those things. The meal I ordered was some sort of barley risotto. Now it did clearly say on the menu that it was gluten-free, but I know from my experience growing up that barley is most certainly not gluten-free. And I did some quick Googling and sure enough, everything that I saw on Google said that barley is not gluten-free. And free. So I called over the waitress and in some very broken Japanese I basically just said to her Oshimugi wa gluten free desu ka? Oshimugi is basically what they call barley or at least that's how it was written on the menu. So she went away and she came back to me with a iPad that had a Google Translate open and it said barley does not contain gluten to make bread so bread does not swell well when baked. Wheat gluten is formed from gliadin and glutenin but barley uses Hordian instead of gliadin. Uh, look, I didn't want to cause a fuss, so I just said arigato gozaimasu. I mean, let's start a discussion down below because guys, I'm concerned. If you were a celiac and traces of gluten could send you to a hospital, I don't know if you want to go risking that. I, I mean, unless Japanese people have somehow figured out how to remove gluten from barley, but all of my research says that you can't remove the gluten from the barley, so I have absolutely no idea. There's supposed to be things like pancakes and french toast. I guess we must have got there a little bit too late for that menu because the menu we looked at, basically everything was salad. Now, speaking of the salad, something that my dad noticed that he wouldn't stop pointing out because he was horrified. The chef was preparing the food and he was using his fingers without gloves, which is okay. I understand the chefs wash their hands before they, you know, make the food, but he's touching it. And then he was licking his fingers and then immediately putting his fingers back into the food. I watched him get a silver bowl. He filled it up with various salad leaves. He put the cauliflower and he put the salad leaves and all this sort of stuff. He used his fingers. He put some salt and some pepper, drizzled some oil, got his hand, went like this and massaged the salad, then went like that. And then he put his hand back in my dad's salad. At first, as dad was explaining this to me, dad's sitting there going, I just watched him lick a spoon and then put the spoon back into my food. And I went, dad, you must be imagining it. So what I did, then I swapped seats with dad so that I could watch the kitchen from where I was. And sure enough, he gets a bowl and he scrapes this dressing out of the bowl, puts it on a plate, licks the spoon, put the spoon down, and then I watched him a couple of minutes later when he picked up the exact same spoon and then used it to put dressing on someone else's food. I could see him doing it, like he, he wasn't even ashamed. But uh, anyway, overall, nice food, wouldn't go again. Careful about the gluten-free thing, even though it's marked as gluten-free, I'm not entirely sure. So with that, let's head down to this Cosme kitchen adaptation and grab ourselves some afternoon tea.
So Cosme Kitchen Adaptation. If this buffet is gluten free, I'm gonna go for that. So I just went over and asked about the buffet. It isn't all gluten free. Most of the items are. There are some things that may contain contaminants. There was a soup she said isn't gluten free. She was pointing at some things saying this is, this isn't, this is, this isn't. I think that's a little bit too risky if you are a celiac. So I would recommend you order off the menu because the menu is guaranteed to be gluten free. We have rice bowls, gluten free. Pasta is gluten free. Enjoy the brown rice noodles. 200 yen can be changed to gluten free. There you go. The hot pot is gluten free as well, both of those. Simple grilled grass fed beef steak. Rui Boss tea stewed pork spare ribs, apple and ginger sauce. Oh, we've got sweets here too. Gluten free, gluten free, gluten free, gluten free. Wow, this is impressive. Very impressive. Dad's food looks absolutely incredible. This is apparently gluten-free vegan, some sort of meat substitute. That was a whirlwind of emotions. If I ate that and I didn't know that was vegan, I'd think it was chicken. That's so nice. I can't believe that's gluten-free and vegan at the same time. That is absolutely delicious. So here is my, uh, my Rui Boss pork and it smells really strongly of apple and Rui Boss tea. It smells absolutely incredible. I'm so excited. Oh, it's so tender. It's falling off the bone. Okay. I didn't even have to cut that. It just tore. Mmm, yum. It's unusual because it's very tender but also really chewy. You couldn't order this and not have the salad buffet. You just couldn't do it. This is so salty. I do regret ordering this because after tasting Dad's one, I wish that I'd had that because that's so nice. I'm not saying that the pork isn't great. Dad's one is just so good. <laughs> Dad, do you know how much that cost? Oh dear, um, mm, in, in our money probably about $70. $70 in, in Australian dollars, so you reckon maybe 6,000 yen? Yeah. Are you ready for me to tell you how much it was? No. It was 11,500 yen. Wow. <laughs> which is um, about 130 Australian dollars, which is terrifying. I, I was going to recommend it to you, but after I received the bill, I have now decided that I'm not going to recommend it to you. See, the main meal that I had with the pork, it was just pork served with some sort of puree under it, not served with the salad or anything, and they do recommend that you get the lunch salad. When you add the lunch salad buffet, it's about 1,300 yen on top of the 2,200 yen for the meal and then all the drinks are at least 700 yen for each drink so um, I don't really have a huge amount else to say so for dinner we're heading to a place called where is a dog and uh, it's got that interesting name for an interesting reason which I will show you when we get there So this restaurant is just a three minute walk from Waseda Station. This is a 100% gluten free restaurant, which I'm really excited about. It's called Where is a Dog? Because apparently when you walk in there, that's the one question on your mind while you're looking around. You're asking yourself, where is a dog? Based on the Google reviews, this is a not to be missed gluten free location. So I do have high hopes. Fingers crossed we love it. I'm sure we will. Let's head inside.
okay. I tried the chicken first, and then I tried the sausage pizza. They were nice enough. They weren't excellent though. They were a little bit soggy. The side dishes were very, very tiny for 500 yen. They do have a fridge though at the back of the shop that's full of gluten-free bread, bagels. They had a lot of gluten-free snacks around the front counter that you can buy. I really didn't like that the drinks were so small for the price and the menu was very limited. Also, I didn't find the dog, which was a big letdown. I ordered a pancake for dessert and the pancake was very dry, like almost inedible. The pizza was nice though, but the best thing about it was definitely the cozy vibe. I really, really liked the vibe of the restaurant. I could have stayed there all night, especially because it's cold out. It was so warm and welcoming inside. And if you're a crazy cat person, you will feel right at home. Okay guys, that was the 10 gluten-free restaurants in Tokyo. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is pretty pastel, please. I had so much fun making this video and I really appreciate that you guys stuck around until the end. I know it was a long one. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!